Oh, dude! You ripped it off! You ripped well, it off! You ain't even pulled it off! No, that wasn't me! <laughs> This town is beautiful. It's so well kept. This is like embarrassing. <laughs> this is my little fish. I'm Elena and this is Riley. And this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last six years now. And recently, it's like we're seeing everything for the first time through a new set of eyes. This is our little boy, Lenny. Click the subscribe button to join our voyage every Monday. Good. It's pretty challenging jumping into what is the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when you're looking after Lenny. Off launching a dinghy from a yacht and then jumping in off that. There's a lot of stuff to do. But anyway, we saw some amberjacks, a whole bunch of triggerfish. I think I saw a wahoo. Really? Yeah. Thousands of barracuda. Some mackerel, some yellowtail. I saw a groper when I got down deep. How deep did you go? Uh, I'm out of sorts. I'm gonna do Adam Stern's online free diving course. It's supposed to be amazing. I've done a little bit of it and I wanna get right into the rest of it so I can get back to my peak performance 58 meter Dean's blue hole job. Yeah, so if you guys want to train to free dive without actually getting into the water, one of the most important parts of free diving is going to be the technical parts behind it, like learning to equalise, working on your breath times and all that sort of stuff. So all of that can be done above the surface. And Adam has come up with a pretty amazing series of tutorial videos. And it's certainly worth having a look if that's something that you're interested in. We'll do a link to that in the description below. Greetings Earthlings, we're sailing at the moment from the island of Sao Miguel in the Azores. If you guys don't know where the Azores are, they're the islands off the mainland of Portugal. In the middle of the Atlantic there's nine of them, it's like insane. We've only explored one island so far so we're on our way to the next one which is Tercera. We left this morning, it's 80 nautical miles, we were hoping to get there by sunset tonight but there wasn't as much wind as we'd hoped for so kind of just gone slower the boys have just been for a free dive on this bank halfway and said they've seen heaps of sea life I didn't get to dive though I had to man the ship and yeah we're gonna overnight sail should be really nice the conditions are quite calm Bye. Bye. <laughs> who's that <laughs> Oh, you like them, do you, Grubby? I thought I'd overfilled the kettle. I didn't realise. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you boys fixed this. I did. You ripped it off. You ripped well, it off. You went in full. No, it wasn't me. What a hack. I'm really stabbed. It's like a fountain. <laughs> I just ripped the faucet off the sink, but I swear, I don't know what happened, it's all a bit of a blur, but I was just filling up the kettle, looking at the fishing rods, and then water was just spraying up the roof. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. We're all having a bit of a giggle because we didn't do a food shop before we left and it's come to dinner time and no one knows what we should eat. I'm eating a stale rice cracker. All we have is like tuna, pasta, rice. That looks really nice. Lenny started eating it. Well, Lenny started putting his teeth into it without eating it at all. So I started helping him. There we go. We got some tomato left over. <laughs> And I did do a shop. Yeah. You guys got, got bread. I did, no, I did nothing. I look out for Lenny and Riley. You went for the shop. What did I you got, buy? Because there's I still got nothing. Fruit. <laughs> we already had vegetables. 
Okay, but we're eating healthy. So <laughs> what do we eat? We're fried veggies. Fried veggies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can't be bothered cooking though. Okay, then we eat bread. Reach <laughs> for <laughs> Pulling down Lenny's dinner. I'm gonna tell everyone how naughty you've been this evening. He's just been whinging for like 20 minutes and he's tired and hungry. Salivating. <laughs> you must be hungry. Are you hungry? No. What have you found? I found some of the best rice ever. How is it? Pretty good. What's we ended up with wine and rice. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's got garlic. What have you put in it? Olive oil, butter, salt, and rice. Andre started cooking it, and I was like, thanks, mate. Um, so what are we having? And he goes, rice. <laughs> and I go, yeah, <laughs> please continue. But that was rice, it. full stop. <laughs> So what's happening? We're just making sure we don't get ran over by a boat going 20 knots, but should be fine. Just reeled in the fishing rods because we definitely don't want to catch fish at night. Have we ever done that before, babe? I don't no, think we have. I got spooled once off oh, the Oh yeah, of I think we've been spooled twice in the night for just accidentally leaving them out. Anyway, a lot of you have been wondering about Andre. We haven't like done a proper interview with him, so. I'm going to ask him a few questions for those of you who are curious about Andre who's been floating around and been on and off the boat for a while. So Dre, how did we meet? Why are you on the Vagabond? I brought you some wine and olive oil in Lisbon when you got from the transatlantic passage. Riley liked me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then I... What are you doing, Riley? <laughs> yeah, you came to the boat like a few times and we were so busy. Mm -hmm. And one time you said, hey, I'm at the sailing school over here. You can do a chat or something. And I was like, oh, we do not have time, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And then the next time you brought us wine and then, I don't know, we just liked you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I helped you with some stuff. Oh yeah, helped us with the laundry. Yeah. 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 Way to That's our heart. the fastest way to cross his heart. <laughs> yeah. So I'm taking a computer engineering bachelor degree as a safety net. But basically I work in yachts, in deliveries, charter, and I also have a video production company. And Called Cine Sailing. <laughs> I want to do the Volvo Ocean Race as oh, an OVR. Yeah. And yeah, that's where I'm heading. But it's a lot of work. Without getting all soppy, I really should say just how wonderful Andre really is. He grew up in Lisbon by the sea and started racing Optimus when he was really young. When we first met him, I was immediately drawn to his positive energy and after a fair few sales with him now, that hasn't faded. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen him grumpy, but apparently like any normal person, he can be from time to time. He's one of those people who kind of laughs their way through life. He's been one hell of a hand with the sailing and just making day-to-day -day living and travelling all the more easy. We were laughing the other day about what his job description was. We came up with a pretty long list. From watching Lenny, to helping Riley fiberglass, to even being my personal therapist at times. He's quickly become a part of the family here on La Vagabond, and Lenny lights up around him. We hope that he'll continue to crew for us for a while longer, but we know he has dreams of getting on a Volvo Ocean Race as an OBR. Bit of a long shot, but if anyone knows anyone, feel free to send him an email on his website that I'll link below. He's a wizard with a camera, doesn't eat much, and is very hygienic. Andre's not tired, so I'll try and get a couple of hours now if I can. I'll be here at the ready to go and do some sailing. A good captain never leaves his saloon. <laughs> you got the first shift? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm jumping into bed and the boys are going to wake me up at 2. Or we, we don't, I don't know what time we're going to arrive. But we're coming into a new port at night time. We don't have any reception, so we haven't called them. But apparently there's like a dock we can tie off to, so we're just going to wing it. And in the morning I'm sure someone will be there to tell us to move spots and <laughs> how irresponsible we were to come in and not let them know. So yeah, we should start. I asked the boys to get one shot of us arriving into Sarah. They didn't. Here's a photo of a llama. 
Last night when we started the second engine to get into this port, Lenny woke up, but instead of crying, he started making engine noises. And he started going, mum, 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 mum. And I was like, go back to sleep, Lenny. <laughs> he was like, mum. <laughs> For like an hour. <laughs> this is so funny. Very cute, Lenny. I just had a little bit of a sleep, which I've felt a little bit guilty about, and then after a while I was like, no, nah, you probably earned that. I don't know how many times on night shift I would have stayed awake from one until four in the morning, and then on either sides of it, set my alarm for 15 minute increments, and that just really chips away at your sleep patterns. After arriving from a crossing, you can really take a while to get used to it. And Elena and I just, with Lenny now, we just have to start having crew. So from 1.30 last night until 3.30, we'd been up all day, and Andre goes, you can go to sleep if you want. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> he goes, yeah. So I jumped into bed. It was incredible. Cheers, Dre. He's still sleeping. That sailing in the middle of the night and coming into a new port. I mean, he's, he's done it before, but he's still at a point where there is literally nothing else that he would rather be doing. Like, mm. he's still learning all of that stuff. So, it's good. It's perfect. All right. Three meters. We slept on the fuel dock last night. We got in at like 3 a.m. This morning, I saw the gendarmerie and the marina people outside the boat and that was so nice. This is at 10 o'clock, by the way. So they let us sleep in <laughs> and they're like, hey guys, we have a scheduled police fuel up with the boat. Would you mind moving over to the marina? We have a spot for you. So that's what we just did. From here, I can already see like the town looks so old and beautiful and so many colors and I've seen a castle. So excited to go and explore. Hey, Julia. Name of the town? Angra do Irui. Is that right, Andre? Yep. Pretty good. This town is World Patrimony by UNESCO. What about that big horrible looking hotel when we come in? We were laughing about that. We took the tender out here. <laughs> and it's all like, there's a fort over there, a fort there. There's this great big church here and another one over there. It's all beautiful. And then a massive hotel over here. Mm, there's always one hotel. You are dressed like a diva. Lenny was trying to swing a gate open, but he went to push it past its hinges and it stopped and bounced back and smacked it in the head. <laughs> Story of his life. <laughs> Are you okay? This town is beautiful. It's so well kept. Like, it's old, but everything is so neat. Nothing's kind of falling down and it's clean. So it's founded in 1478 and it was historically the most important city in the Azores as seat of the Bishop of the Azores, oh, yeah. government entities and having previously served as the capital city of Portugal during the Liberal Wars. Good with it. It's a bouillon. No. Ballon? Yeah, ballon Portuguese rice. is bouillon. Bouillon. Bouillon rice. Bouillon rice was about the only thing I saw down there. Visibility was subpar, I'm afraid to say, but the water was a lot warmer than I thought it would be. And it's illegal to load your gun out of the water in Portugal. Wow. As in, you could be arrested and thrown in jail. 
but you can get a large fine. Portugal has got some pretty stringent laws. They're sticklers. Your worst nightmare. A country of sticklers. <laughs> this is like embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> this is my little fish. Hey, it's gonna be dinner. Yeah, you be that's proud. Great. I'm really proud. <laughs> How's it fish? Very, very nice. Baked in the oven, delicious. Except it's been like a three hour event, the veggies still aren't done. They've, I wouldn't call it simultaneous table service, but it's been pleasantly drawn out. <laughs> Next week we make the absolute most of the island of Tessera and make some friends. Someone also has a little accident. Make sure you're not eating food while you watch the next episode.